Let's get started with telepathy. With the power to read minds like you would read a book, snatch memories from people and replace the ones you took, as well as project the presence so forceful that it could leave everyone aware, shook, or shock for those who don't know what that means. Also known by mind reading, ESP, clairvoyance, and possessing a sixth sense, users of this extremely popular and common power possess the ability of telepathy, the ability to receive and transmit information with one's mind without physical interaction. <laughs> now we all know what telepathy is, even the less nerdy among us. I, I'm pretty sure we all know what that is, but let's start off with a more boring and neutral definition, and then from there we can get crazy. Telepathy is the supposed communication of thoughts or ideas by means other than the known senses. Although many other mind-based abilities fall under telepathy due to those powers overlapping with the core concept of what telepathy tends to be, in general terms, someone who possesses this ability allows a telepath to interact with their mind or the minds of others in a variety of ways. <laughs> Some of the more common abilities also considered telepathy would also be perceiving the thoughts of others and detecting the presences of other minds through extrasensory means. But more advanced users can influence or completely control the minds of their targets and manipulate their thoughts, memories, and emotions at will. Potentially though, they can even tap into a uh, psychokinesis and control the psychic energy from their telepathic abilities, which can then in turn strengthen their previous powers and possibly grant them new ones. It really just depends. However, in order to draw a line in the sand so I don't confuse and muddle my point, strictly speaking, psychokinesis refers to telepathy, aka mind manipulation, achieved via psionic or psychic power, in whatever way your medium decides to show it. And as such, users of this power need an established psychic element that is a part or established in your world already. But for our world and the people that exist in it, this power is as fake as fake gets. I mean, there are numerous ways to simulate this ability, which we will get into, but one way you guys know you will be able to is by hitting that like and subscribe button. No, not really, but still hit that like and subscribe button. <laughs> but if you got a good read on where I'm going with these videos, then at least hit that share button to share it with others who may be interested. But if you guys are ready to ride on your target's mental mind, then uh, slip on in and let's get comfortable. We're going to be here for a while. The origins of this fictional concept, and yes, unfortunately, it's a fake concept, has a weird origin if you can call it an origin at all. There have always been those who have claimed to be in touch with the supernatural, as telepathy as we understand it and, well, portrayed it, is normally seen as a supernatural effect. And for the longest time, aka thousands to millions of years, was never given much more credence than that. I mean, other than fortune tellers, clairvoyance, and the occasional dollar store psychic. But up until recently, and I'm talking about as recent as the 1800s, was this phenomenon given actual consideration as something that might have more validity? more than likely for wartime applications. Thank you, MK Ultra. So after countless studies and offerings of monetary incentives and the drugging of innocent civilians, the super smart among us came to the conclusion that uh, <laughs> it doesn't exist. In fact, the pursuit of its discovery revealed that humans have always been and or always will be the conniest of con men and con women. But this hasn't stopped those clever little buggers that we call humans from faking it until you make it. As after this, it more or less became something that's used for entertainment or monetary gain. That's where the rise of mentalists and other body language readers in their many different forms come in. But of course, because this is considered something supernatural, you know it has roots in myth and legends of various world cultures. <laughs> I'm perhaps of every world culture. Of course, they didn't call it telepathy as that term is more, uh modern, but that modern term does have roots in Greek phonetics, so think about that if you want to, it doesn't really matter. It was more or less called magic or divination, and as you guys know in most cultures, magic is seen as something that either comes from a divine or devious figure, aka gods or devils, <laughs> or the respective mythological equivalent, whatever that would be in your particular culture. And the most popular and common examples of this in mythology are users using an object like uh, musical tools or ritualistic movements, ingestible items, or shapes to produce said effect. Okay, now let's get the boring part out the way. Let's, let's just go ahead and get this out of here. 
Yes, the act of telepathy, if you can call it that, is something that does not exist in our current understanding of quantum physics and the laws of nature. Yeah, this ability can be and is often conflated with others like psychokinesis or ESP, and yeah, in following the theme of the previously mentioned, because this power operates by having the user connect their mind with another, it does, in turn, come from the mind. But this isn't always the case, as motion-based commands and or verbal commands are pretty common and allow the user of a ESP to connect and communicate to other beings as well. Now don't get me wrong, while this concept isn't real, it has been faked for millennia, as we humans are pretty smart. <laughs> well, clever. Okay, or at least very observant. So someone who notices subtle muscle tics, patterns, and breathing or behavior, all the way to having inside information on who you're trying to read ahead of time could fake this power in our real world, and the less intelligent among us would actually tend to believe them. And what do all the previously mentioned allow you to do? Basically gather information to communicate and or communicate to gather information. So with that being said, symbolically, telepathy, like stated briefly earlier, represents not only communication and connection, but also intuition and understanding. <laughs> While on the darker side, if you could say that, invasion and or intrusion as the act of connecting your mind with someone else's or even the more realistic down to earth versions of reading someone's body language is oftentimes considered an intimate act which can leave the person uh, that this was done to feeling used or violated and we can all agree there's nothing more private than someone's thoughts but as superpowers go it's one of the most popular constantly appearing in various forms of media in varying ways. At its most basic level, it functions as a short-range radio, allowing the character to intercept the thoughts of those around them. Sometimes it has limitations such as touch or distance or being only able to hear rather than see thoughts. A common hurdle comes from being unable to probe deeper into the minds of those around them, as well as being something of a sensitive psychic, basically meaning their impasse on steroids. So uh, whenever an especially strong-willed or horrifying characters around, the psychic will know and will be able to physically feel the, uh, I guess, negative vibes being put out. So this leads us to our next point, as psychic overload is also common in crowds or when they strain themselves using their powers. This is normally represented by a psychic nosebleed or bloodshot eyes. And another downside to this ability is the act of being a passive receptor, you know, receiving other people's thoughts and not being able to shut out those thoughts can easily drive a psychic insane, which is pretty sucky if you think about it. More advanced uses of telepathy involve receiving and transmitting thoughts and memories. And probing beneath the surface into thoughts and memories, or outright journeying into the center of the mind, or <laughs> traveling through someone's dreams. Some telepaths might be able to use astral projection so they can separate their consciousness from their body and then play the role of a ghostly voyeur, or they can plop their mind in someone else's so they can see through people's eyes, but at its strongest, a telepath will be able to mind control others with little to no effort, <laughs> sometimes to the point of possessing their bodies outright. They could even create fake memories after, you know, some kind of plot-based amnesia, create split personalities in themselves or the target, which is some kind of meditation-based aspect of this power, and then in turn let the fake personality take themselves or take the target over, which is pretty scary. Or in general, be a terrifying god who can rip their opponent's mind apart and drive them into insanity. And because the mind controls everything, the person won't know what's real or what's not. So even if you don't have any other superpowers, you can make yourself seem like you do by attacking the target's mind. It's worth noting, however, that for the above reasons, telepathy is one of the most potentially pervertible powers, meaning that you get this power, you become a literal creep. I've already touched on the invasion of privacy earlier. So long story short, if you come across somebody with this power, it might already be too late as they could be affecting you and you won't even know it. So let's just say if you hear about one or figure out a way to locate one without them locating you, good luck. I recommend headshots only. You miss, you're in trouble. Like seriously, taking them out in one hit before they know you are there is critical. But in terms of a story, I guess, the telepath is the metaphorical sighted man in the kingdom of the blind, provided he's discreet. He can know everyone down to their most intimate detail and can use this acquired information accordingly. Oftentimes though, this is a lot worse when he's the dictator or the overlord of some sort. So uh, 
it would go without saying that mind manipulators in real life could cause a level of paranoia that our world is not really ready for, which is a good thing they don't exist. This is why in settings with a unmasqueraded telepaths, they're often feared, persecuted, policed, and registered. That is when they aren't used as weapons or straight up killed off top. Heroic telepaths are thus in a difficult position both inside and outside a story because they will normally have to prove that bad powers belonging to bad people aren't necessarily true. Usually a creator wants them to be a hero, but has to somehow assuage the reader the character doesn't have personal space issues and won't enter a mine unless they're invited. Or if uh, they do, they gotta have a noble and honorable reason for doing so, so they'll normally wait for the target that they're trying to enter for their consent to uh, enter their mind. On top of that, the character will also have to put their colleagues at ease that they aren't going to turn into a mind prober and turn them into droves. That's more than likely going to come up a lot if you're sharing a group with the mind reader. So unfortunately, for a user of this power, they often really do have to practice what they preach and uh, 